All right, y'all. Well, uh, a while back I did a video about using a chop saw and efficiently using a chop saw in the way that I mark metal a lot of times and mark several pieces. And I had a subscriber that suggested that uh, you could set up a stop. And I've had a, a lot of places where I've worked, I've, I've, I've had a setup where we were able to set up a stop. When you're making multiple cuts, you know, with a chop saw or a, a shear, setting up a stop's a great idea. Well, this is what's awesome about uh, getting a comment on this on this chop saw video because the way I was doing it was a good way to do it, better than marking each one, but not as good as having a, a stop set up. And I just, when I set up my roller system for my chop saws, I never even thought about setting up a stop. Um, and I'm in a situation again today where I've got to make multiple cuts of something the same length. And I said, you know what? I had this subscriber that made a suggestion about another way to do this was to set up a stop. And I need to set up a stop. And it was even funnier because this subscriber, my cunt, my cunt made this suggestion. So it's like... I'm being, I know how to deal with this because I'm being told what to do by my cunt. You think I'm kidding. You go back and look at that chop saw video and read the comment from my cunt. My cunt is telling me that I need to set up a stop, so I'm setting up a stop. Let me show you. Alright, so just to be nice and straight. I got this long tube up here, and then I clamp this uh, one by three tube here. You know, that'll be something that I can fasten some kind of a stop to. Now I've cut this on a 45, and that shows, that leaves me a lip here, and I drilled some holes. See, I can get my impact gun down in there and put some screws in that bad boy, and that way I can take this deal off if I ain't using it. Now I don't know if I'm gonna put a permanent leg on it, Fasten it to this wooden thing somehow, or just use a jack stand. A uh, jack stand, I'll probably just use it for now and see how that works before I do any more. But obviously with this angle iron right here, I'm going to have to do a little Miller-matic Miller -matic, uh, fication, uh, you know, and meltify this right here angle iron onto this, this deal here. But that's fine because if I can take these screws out and take this part off, then... I can do that that way, and it won't have to be there all the time when I don't need it. But this is going to set me up to set up a stop, and I'm going to I'm going to give this a try, put this together, and see how it goes. Well, I've been working on building this thing to set up a stop, like my cut suggested, and I've changed my plan a little bit. I've actually ended up I've never bolted these saws down before. Uh, the type of saw, these DeWalt 872s, you know, they're nice, like, they're very portable. I could jerk that off that bench and throw it in a truck and take it somewhere if I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> and when you cut a 45 on these rollers, you would actually move the saw 45 degrees. So I haven't in the past bolted these down, but it, for this, I decided to try it on this saw. Uh, I bolted it down and... Um, you might see right here, I, I had planned on screwing that down when I was thinking that I might want to take that off. I've obviously decided to weld that. Um, it's still cool to show you the trick how when you use tubing and you want to put a screw or a bolt in it, you can cut it on a 45 and get your gun in there to do a screw or a bolt like that. Uh, but... I'm realizing that the way this works, there's probably not real likely that I'm going to want to take that off there. Even when I'm not using the, the, the idea of setting up a stop for my cut length, that tube being there would still help catch a piece of metal, even if I was just marking it and sawing it. So I'm going to cut up some angle iron. Um, I need a bunch of pieces that are the same length. And so I've set up a stop here um, and put way too many clamps on it, so that's cool. And let's see how this works.
that's one thing you got to watch when you set up a stop uh because the stop is there that thing can pinch in that blade we'll see how much trouble that gives us it was okay there but you saw what happened Looks like that's the technique. Run the saw down and don't run it immediately back up. Let the let it throw the piece out. When it throws the piece out and it's out of the way, then I'll let it go back up. I've showed this cement mixer before in a couple other videos. Uh, it's a uh, cement mixer full of nails. Got some uh, hard ox plate in there. Like whatever. I roll metal around in that and this is what it does. That's a piece of tubing. Got them burrs on there fresh out of the chop saw. You can rub this against your finger and make one of the nastiest cuts you ever felt. These have been rolled around in that cement mixer full of nails. All the edges are nice and round, safe to touch. Rust has been removed. Just showing you that real quick. Like I said, it's been in some of my other videos. I think I showed the, I cleaned up the plates like in one of the videos uh i think it was the last the second video i did when i was uh rebuilding that excavator bucket and i think i did a video before just showing the thing and i could probably put some links in the description about that but i'm not gonna you can look it up yourself all right moving on So we set up a stop like Mike Hunt told us to do, and we got some parts cut in the saw. Then uh, we took some of them parts, we put them in the cement mixer full of nails, rolled them around, got them cleaned up. Uh, also took those parts and drilled some holes in them, ran them through the drill press real quick. Have you even wondered like yet, or has the thought crossed your mind like, what the hell are you building? 
You've been thinking about my cut too much, haven't you? Okay, look, I got to show you what we're building. Now these parts have been sawed and drilled. This is a four by two, three sixteenths wall rectangular tube. Okay, uh, one of the interesting things about these tubes, or one of the things that's good to know is if you need something that slides and fits beautifully on a standard two by four, a four by two by three sixteenths rectangular tubing does a fabulous job for that. Now, what we're building right here is something that came about since I built this bridge for a buddy of mine. Uh, there's some video so far, a uh, quick seven minute video of the bridge. If you haven't seen that yet, you can check it out. I'm not gonna put a link nowhere. You go look for that yourself, it's on my channel. But my buddy that's gonna pour the concrete on that bridge was saying, hey, can you build me a, something that I can latch on the bottom of them beams so that I can run a pick board up and down the side of that bridge so I can stand on while I'm finishing floating that concrete. Well, in the beginning, what he was meaning for me to do was to build some kind of a bar out of steel. And one of the things I was realizing, you know, when I go back to the size of that bridge, these beams they're 38 and a half inches center to center and then you want he wants about 30 inches sticking out to put pick board on so you're talking about a pretty long piece so it would take a very large piece of tubing probably an inch and a half or two inch square tubing you know six or seven feet long uh to to do that and he's only going to use it one time and that's expensive tubing now a two by four a four by eight, two by four by eight at Lowe's is four dollars and twenty five cents. And it's strong enough to put the pick boards on. So I said, look, I'll just build you a bracket. I'll just build you a bracket that you would slide over a a two by four. See you can get this, he can get this tight on those beams those beams will look something like this and then he could put a screw in here to keep them in place so they're locked on that beam really well and then he could put his pick board right here and I said well how many of them do you need he said well I, I need six of them we'll put three on each side well i'm making him 12 of them well the thing is you know i don't know what's going to happen it, this guy if he gets a chance to go to 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 the whistle stop and eat chicken wings he'll probably go down there so if central calls and says hey that concrete truck ain't gonna show up till the afternoon and man this guy he's liable to run down to the whistle stop and get his belly full of beer and chicken wings and he'll come rolling back up there on the Abbott Road a little bit in the afternoon, you know, and he'll say, yeah, I pour his concrete and he jumps down on the pick board and there's only three of them there instead of six and then snap, something breaks and man down, we got a guy down in the creek and we're, we're missing a concrete finisher. So we can't have that. So I say we build 12 of them and that way he can put some extra on there if he wants to and, you know, got to be safe about it. And I think this is going to work really well. May even find another use for these brackets when it's done. But what I'm going to do, I want to show you how I'm making these brackets. So let's take a look at that. Part of making a bracket like this is cutting out that notch in the angle iron. Got a piece of angle iron that we cut. Cut all those to length. And then I've made a jig to cut that notch with. This is the same length as the angle iron, and it's got a little leg right here that I can clamp on there. And this opening right here 
I'm going to follow that with my torch. And the important thing about doing it this way, the important thing to understand is that the torch is going to cut a smaller opening in this angle iron than what you have in this. you got to figure out how much. And for me, usually it's an eighth of an inch all the way around. So if I need a certain size opening right here, the opening from here to here is going to be a total of a quarter of an inch bigger. Now, from right here to right here, then depth, I would only allow for an eighth of an inch. Because I'm going to cut, an, my torch is going to cut an eighth of an inch this direction of where I follow. So let's see what that looks like and see how that, how this jig works. Uh, these jigs, when you learn how to make them and you get yourself tuned in with your torch and, and how to follow these things, this is a, 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 an extremely effective way to make cuts that are repeatable and accurate and efficient. If you had to mark all these, it would take you longer to mark that than it's going to take me to cut it. Now these pieces I'm cutting off here are falling on the table, which is fine. If you ever do something like this and you're cutting off those little metal pieces and you're letting them fall on the floor, as soon as you burn them off, I suggest you find a place to kick them. Good place to kick them is like under the table or somewhere, somewhere you know there's not flammables where they're going to cause a fire. The reason I'm telling you to kick them little things somewhere, those things are so hot, if you step on them, you'll ruin your boot in a hurry. Hopefully you smell your boot burning fast enough that you'll step off of it before it burns all the way through. But these work boots are too expensive to be ruining them over something stupid like that.
even my torch adjusted, my flame adjusted for the most part, and I'm just disconnecting those quick connects. It's no problem to relight it that way. I could also leave it burning, lay it down as long as the flame was pointing somewhere it wasn't going to hurt anything. That'd be another way. jig like this just kind of a you just want your your torch tip to follow that with a pretty light touch if you push real hard with your torch tip against your jig it'll kind of make you make you go like eh, 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 eh. you got to have it against there but just with a light touch, with practice, you'll see what I mean. Now that I got these pieces of angle iron all cut, cleaned up, the next part of making a bracket like this is going to be positioning the angle iron on the rectangular tube and welding it on there in the right place. Like anything else, you know, if there's multiple pieces, I'm going to build a jig to put it together. And that's what I got right here. The way this jig works, got a couple clamps. I'll take a piece of this tubing that's ready to go. I'm gonna push this half inch bar right against there. That's what's gonna set my spacing the way I want it, the distance between the inside of the top of that tube and the inside of the bottom of that piece of angle iron. Just take this bar, push it against the tube there, center it up right here, clamp it. And we'll take that angle iron, set it right on top of there, Push it all the way back. Push it back until it hits that half inch plate. This half inch plate's set in my space, just like I want it. Center that up on there. Put a clamp on that. Looks like it needs to go this way a little. That's ready to weld up. So let's see what that looks like as far as assembling these with it with this jig.
Well, that's going to be it for this one. Got those 12 brackets made like I wanted to. <clears throat> Got this stop built. Like my cunt suggested that that we put on there and use and man I'm I'm really gonna get a, a lot of use out of that. I'm I'm really glad my cunt told me to reminded me, you know, about building a stop like that. Uh job coming up where I've got to cut up a bunch of this flat bar and I'm gonna be able to use that stop on that. And I'm sure the whole time I'm gonna be you know, I'm going to be cutting that flat bar and I'm going to be thinking about Mike Hunt. Uh, it's just a great, great thing. Great suggestion. Great comment Mike Hunt made. So uh, that's going to be it for this one. Y'all have a good one.